Hello, I am Tasha, and this is my associate, Anna. And we are here today to teach about utopian communities during the antebellum period in the 19th century. Yeah, it's really pretty cool. You'll see. You know, the Shakers and Transcendentalists in Oneida and the New Harmony groups lived communally and separate from outside influences. Did you know that? Some of them were a little crazy, though, you know? They shared everything. Yeah, that's not the only crazy thing. Anyway... Utopian communities were influenced by Plato's Republic, Acts 242-37 in the New Testament, and Utopia by Thomas More. You mean, de optimo republicae statu de Q nova insula utopia? No, today we speak English. In modern terms, it's just called Utopia. But since you're so smart, why don't you explain the appeal of utopian communities? Sure, and thanks. I know I'm a genius. Well, anyway... They wanted to escape religious persecution, prejudice, and just general annoying people. You mean annoying people like you? Um. All right. The first important group of utopian wannabes. Wannabes. I simply mean they did not achieve their goal of a true utopian society. Anyway, the first group is the Shakers. Shaking Quakers. That was just a nickname. But the Shakers were founded by the Quakers, who were known to shake during intense religious practices. The Shakers were founded in America by this lady, Mother Anne Lee. She's converted by... Ooh, I know this! Jane and James Wardley, wasn't it? Yeah. The main beliefs of the Shakers were the dual godhead of male and female elements. Awesome. Women are just as good as men. Celibacy and perfectionism. Oh, well, that's no fun. But that's part of the reason they failed. The Shakers could not reproduce, so they started dying out. And they had a hard time converting others because they were so disconnected from the outside world, had no internal momentum, and people had a hard time coping with strict lifestyles. So, celibacy was a problem for some new converts. Even though the Shaker community fell apart, it did lead to the creation of other utopian communities, including the New Harmony Group that was founded by Robert Owen. They rejected the Bible and formal religion, and instead favored reason. They were also into creating model agriculture and manufacturing villages. They despised capitalism and private property ownership. Wait, were they communists? Kind of. Ooh, is it my turn to explain the failure? Only if you know it. I do, I do. Okay. Go ahead. So let me see. The New Harmony Group fell apart because there was no central belief or authority that united the members of the community together. The group disbanded only three years after its founding due to extreme debt. Around the same time as the New Harmony Group existed, another group was in America. Here, Anna, why didn't you explain this group? Yay! I love talking. Next up is Sunnybrook Farm. That's just Brook Farm, Anna. I knew that. Didn't I say that? No. The people of Brook Farm. Right. They were transcendentalists. Um, Tasha? Transcendentalists were people who believed that reality was only to be discovered through thoughts and spiritual experiences. Ooh, cool! So Brook Farm was founded by George Ripley in Massachusetts. The people there believed that the Calvinist church doctrine and rationalism of the Unitarian Church were false. They did believe that intuition was better than the five senses and self-reliance was important, as well as sharing stuff like home, work, and their economy. Wow, that was actually all correct. All right, like the, all the other utopian societies at the time, it inevitably failed. That's mean. Well, sadly enough, it's true. Brook Farm failed because the central building burned down in 1846, and the group disbanded in the following year. Guess they couldn't have a utopia without actually having a place to have it in. Well, even though most of the utopian communities failed, there is one example of a community that still survived in some form for the 21st century. Wait, you know who was inspired by Brook Farm? Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. I know my writers. That's about all you do know. Hmm, did you say something? Um, yes. I said that the group that survived was the Unitas. Do you know anything about them? They were the perfect ones, right? Very good. They're usually called perfectionists. Do you know anything else about them? Yeah, sure. The Onidas believed in perfectionism, the ability to live free of sin, and considered themselves married to the group. Seriously, they shared everything, even partners. So what happened to them, little Miss Noel? 
Well, the system of marriage failed first, and then in 1881 they all split up, and eventually some members formed a joint stock corporation that still makes silverware. They are called Onita Limited. Do you know who started the Onita Group? I don't. John Humphrey Noyes. Actually, the Anitas began to fall apart when Mr. Noy turned away to Canada to escape statutory rape charges. After that, the group disbanded and disagreed on who should command. The Anita Society was Mr. Noy's vision of a utopia. Like the other utopian communities, it was founded by one person and like other communities, it fell apart when the ideals could not match reality. Oh yeah, right. I knew that. Yes, you didn't. Hey, Tasha? Yeah, Anna? Can you remind me why we care? Care about what? I mean, the utopian societies don't exist today, right? Technically, a true utopian society never did exist. They weren't perfect societies, which is the whole point of being utopia. Technically, the word also means no place. Right, because utopias are impossible. You know, nothing is perfect. That doesn't stop people from trying, though. Hey, you know something else about utopia? Probably, but tell me anyway. Did you know that utopias inspired many influential pieces of literature and political changes in the 1800s, including communist movements and Catherine Maria Sedgwick's novel Redwood? Yes, and some people today still strive for utopian societies. However, people constantly strive for perfection in their societies and governments. Not that they actually achieve perfection, but there is always room for improvement, I guess. I don't know. I think life is perfect already. Ignorance is bliss.